let's look at the word trust. I love that you brought up trust because not only did she have to trust me as the mediator, but she had to trust you as her attorney. So maybe we can start with why are settlements, what makes a settlement prohibitive? What makes it a rocky road getting to where you have to get to eventually uh, in an out-of-court settlement? Um, Everybody has to agree at some point in time. She definitely had a lot of trust in you. And I saw the way you behaved. And it was so cool because people do not have the best impressions of attorneys. When they need them, they need them, but everybody fears them. And sometimes you want the pit bull attorney, which I don't know advantages anybody. What's your opinion about that term? The... Okay, there's two issues there. First of all, the pit bull attorney might be good if you're going to court, right? But even still, the judges these days are not, that's, that style is no longer working. Judges want lawyer, want to see lawyers who work with each other and are cooperative, respectful. They do not want rude, obnoxious, overly zealous, aggressive lawyers. It might make the client feel good to see their lawyer flexing muscles for them, but it's just a show and it doesn't get the client what they want ultimately. And if you're talking about, right, like if we talk about court, then you are entrusting a complete stranger wearing a black robe to make decisions about your children, your hard-earned assets and money, and basically your future. And it's really, really dangerous. Um, So that's why, in my opinion, mediation is by far the best place to go And the reason why is because it allows the parties to craft terms of settlement that work for them, not arbitrary rules and terms dictated by a judge. And inside the mediation, what is prohibitive is, I think it comes down to what is the motivating factor, right? What what does a client want? Each client has something that they really, really want. And likewise, they have a very, very, you know, they have an Achilles tendon, something that is, you can't touch, for example, custody. And, you know, there are certain issues that when you poke them, it hurts and it turns them off. It shuts them down and the conversation ends and people want to walk out of rooms. So I think that in the mediation, the reason why we were so successful in the, in the case that you're discussing is because you were able to identify the motivating factor, right? It can't be about depriving the other side of something. Someone can't want 90% custody just because they don't want the other side to have 50-50, right? They have to want what they want because it's in the best interest of either the children or their assets and for both spouses going forward. And so in the case that you're referring to, the trust was developed because you listened to both clients, both parties of the divorce. And each side did have something that they really, really wanted and something that was a big soft spot for them, their Achilles tendon. And when you have a mediator, especially with the help of lawyers that on both sides who are not interested in churning fees, who are actually settlement you know, oriented, um, you are able to have those discussions, identify the issues that both sides want, the reasons why, and craft a creative settlement that gives both sides the best of both worlds and send them out both 